How's it going, everybody? I am Donut. This is, of course, a Black Lives Matter, all cops are bastards, and trans rights supporting channel. If you're not supporting that shit, get the fuck off this channel. This is Squid Game, Season 1, Episode 4, Stick to the Team. Very glad we got that uh, title in here already. Like, interesting, that's not the title of, like, the game or anything, which we have been doing. The title of the game is the title of the episode when we have that, so I wonder if there's even going to be a game in this episode or not, but stick to the team. Also, what's it going to be like in between games now? Like, the other one was the game was over and then the episode ended, which is basically where we are here, too. Or not like the episode ended, but well, it did, and they kind of all wanted to go home. And so... Now this one, what's the end, like, if they are sleeping over until the next thing, how long of a period is it till the next game? How long do they need to set up? Because they had quite a long time to set up these two, but we'll see. Maybe they already are ready to go, and we'll just go to the next one. Because I can't see how this whole episode would be without a game if we're just going to be in the facility the whole time. But I could be very surprised. So stick to the team. Going to be about the whole... You know, if you cut a lion into three pieces, can it still live? The idea of a team is one entity. A, a team works like a lion. If you try and, you know, do stuff different from the team, you're going to rip that lion apart. If you try and cut off the bad parts of it, you're cutting the lion. You know, the, the team is an entity in and of itself. And any time you make a concession or any time you... Uh, something goes wrong or you want to cut off a person on that team or whatever or you want to say like well it's fine if they die but we will uh, you know you're gonna fuck up the whole team so the stick to the team is we have to stick to what the team is we can't change that in any way the team is what the team is uh, and I I'm guessing that's what that's what's gonna be a, a lot of like oh maybe this person shouldn't be on the team maybe this person shouldn't be on the team Blah, 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 blah. Like, even if they want to, they can get as angry as they want to get at Sangwoo here, but at the same time, doesn't matter how much someone fucks you over, they've got to stay on the team. Because if you cut off a person on that team, you're cutting the lion. <laughs> so, that, that's my guess. If you want to get the full length, check it out on Patreon below for $4 a month. If you want to get early access, a couple episodes ahead, go get that on Patreon as well. Go check all that shit out. Let's get into the episode. Okay, okay, first off, that game, again, they're getting better and better and better each each time we get one, absolutely. This one was incredibly good, like, the tug of war, again, I've seen tug of war in a death game before, I've seen red light, green light in a, in a death game before, I've, I've never seen the honeycomb one before, but, like, even the ones that I've already seen before are, you know, they're, they're doing them not in a, like, more unique way, just in a really perfect way. I don't know how else to put it other than that. And I think something that definitely helps is that a lot of the ones, like, a lot of the ones, the two that I've already seen before, were done in a very quick way, where, you know, you're, you we just kind of quickly see, like, the main character go through it, but we don't really get to see how anybody else deals with it, or anything like that. They're usually very, very quick ones that I've seen before. And I think I've only seen them, like, well, once in one other thing. But either way, uh, you know, this getting to see how many teams go through it, and the fact that we just go through everything so much slower in this is exactly what I want out of any death game. Going through this stuff slower, going through the a little bit more methodical, getting to see how other teams, you know, deal with this sort of stuff first. And also, not having the main character do stuff first is also, like, you know, not used to that as well. Really appreciate it, because then it gives the main character a chance to see what happens, and then think about what they're going to do, and then so on and so forth. Whereas, usually I feel like it's in the moment where they figure out what the game even is. <laughs> Which, I do like this one, going into it, knowing what the game is, before we even go into it. Like, it's, it's right before we walk out there, but, like, you know, as they go out there and it's like, here's what the game is, okay, now we're going to start playing. Rather than just, here's the place, start playing and figure out what the game is yourself. Uh, I actually like this much, much better. Uh, and, yeah, just the, the idea of, like, the, 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 you can win Tug of War, which seems like such a physical-based game, via tactics. And the fact that the, the old man is the one who gave us these tactics is you know, the perfectly done. If our team sticks with this amount of people, I assume all the guys we got are gonna die off immediately. Meanwhile, uh, Scribe the Herd Girl, which you still don't have her name, uh, she's probably gonna stick around, as well as, uh, what was, well, a Pickpocket Girl, obviously. I don't know why I was trying to think of her name. Uh, but, <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. I gotta write down these new names that we got. But, 
Um, also, the girl that she got, I, I feel like th those two new girls that we got are going to stick around much longer because they seem like they have a, one, a, a striking character design, and two, they seem like they have something to bring to the table other than whining. <laughs> so, yeah, my, my bets are on them two sticking around much longer than the, the three guys who are just going to get killed off next game, maybe, or maybe even, I don't know how it'll be this game, but unless, like, uh... Duke just, like, goes and kills them, you know, at, at night or something like that, maybe. I, that wouldn't be in this game, but that's the only other thing I think of, is that at night they might die. But, I don't know. Um, they might not even stick around with the team, but considering this is stick to the team, I assume this is going to be sticking to the team, versus the team that did not stick to the team, Duke says, I believe is going to, you know, fall apart more. But yeah, we've been talking about it so much that it was very appreciative to, to get the teams formed this episode. Like, in an even bigger sense, too, where now we have ten people teams, which I have never seen in a death game before. I feel like most of the time it's at max six, and even then six is crazy. Like, four to three is, I feel like, the more normal uh, group that you would have. And you would have more and more groupings. A lot of times you have duos that are working together a lot. Versus this was, the, the only time we had, like, a duo that was kind of working together was the first two guys to get killed in red light green light the guy with that was like sort of uh, pumping up his hair a little bit and the guy with the blonde highlights but those guys seemed like they were a little bit of a duo and they got killed right off so we did have that like if you want to call that a trope <laughs> i don't know if you can but you know that, that's certainly a thing there um but then we have much bigger groups immediately forming with Daeksu's whole thing, and then uh, Jihoon and, and Sungwoo were like were clearly forming the four-person group, and then that blew up to four to five people before we. I said blew up to five, but that that got up to five people before we even then made the whole group. And I do like the way that two twelve, uh, the scraggly haired girl, how she comes into our group like in the last few seconds when we have no one left. Like that is excellent. But, like, it still feels like there's something that's going to go down in this whole tug-of-war thing. Uh, based off, of, like, Sung Woo saying, like, you know, oh, we need to get t only men in this. You know, we already have one woman, that's too many. Like, it feels like there's going to be something that proves him wrong in that sense. Because they, they kept bringing that up as, like, a, you know this team's going to win, but we keep bringing this up. So, I, it feels like we're still, we're still missing something there. But, yeah. Uh, Sung Woo is absolutely turning already into our, like, I don't care about anybody else, I'm only concerned about myself, and if I need a team, then I need a team, but I'm not worried about the team surviving, or anybody else, I'm just focused on me, myself, surviving. And he's good at reminding people, like, list, like, he had a good strategy there, he's good, probably gonna be the one that gets them out of this, and we can't break up the team, he's gotta be a part of this team, I, we, we talked about that at the beginning, but... He's definitely the, the one who's already got the knife in the back and just keeps pushing it in a little bit more and a little bit more each time he has the chance. Because the less people, the more money. It's very important that every time we, we put that money in the thing, the first person we see looking at it is Sung Woo. He's the first person every damn time. Very telling. But yeah, uh, g getting to pick our whole teams, having more people that I care about now to like root for slash also just who I'm like curious about what's going on with them like there's plenty that i don't want to win but i'm still curious about like what's going to go on with them like the doctor character or i mean like even scraggly hair girl like what's going on with her what what's her deal nose piercing girl seems to be equally as like content with this situation as the old man is don't know what's going on with that like it, why is she so confident does she not care about her life or you know whether she lives or dies or is there something else going on here she was doing something with like the little string like testing how tug of war worked essentially i don't know what was up with that like that has any more higher significance or anything not exactly sure uh and yeah it, it's it's nice seeing that jihoon the very first person that he went to to like get a part of his team was sebyak when they were like in the whole everybody was gonna get killed at night sort of thing and he was like going to her not in terms of i want to increase the strength on our team or to anything like that but just and they like listen i can see that you have something going on with Jaksu and it, like if you want to, to to just stick with us, not for, like, protection, but just, like, we're all going to be by this bed, we're all going to be defending ourselves, you should be there as well. And then that went into, now she is a part of the group. We also have the old man not remembering his name. 
dementia oh no that's gonna be bad it, especially in future games and stuff like he is an unbelievable asset right now but we are just keep setting up for that tragic moment where something's gonna go horribly horribly wrong also again another game in which they all have to survive or they all have to die unlike the other one where somebody could have died but i was like that's not gonna happen because they're they want to they still have so much to do with this uh with these teams and with these characters that they're not gonna kill off one right now then in this one, I was like, we're probably going to kill somebody next game. No, nope. everybody's got to live this one. They've got to. So our fourth game is where we're going to start killing off some people. And that's interesting. Four out of six, like halfway through. Now, I am unclear as to what the doctor is doing. Like, so they have some of the pink suits. Some of the pink suits are orchestrating the thing where they're, they're looping the cameras and they're putting little blood on the boxes so that way they could be uh, taken off to a separate area where then they can also lead this doctor to that area get him to do an autopsy on the bodies they took out the eye put it in water and a and a uh, ziploc bag it, it seemed like they were still searching for something else so if it's not just the eye it was something else they were still searching for but they didn't have the time i'm not sure if they actually found it or if they had to just say you know whatever in this one could it be that they are organ harvesting and selling those organs and that's all it like you know it's not like they're searching for like somebody swallowed pieces of gold or something specific where it's like if we can get this from this body then there's money we have on the outside uh like whether it's a combination that they swallowed or some some weird fucking thing uh like i'm, I'm again i'm thinking of in kaiji with the guy who had the stuff on his back um, and went into the room. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, that should be very not spoilery. Um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking of that sort of thing. And so, I, I, but it doesn't seem like that's what it is. It seems like it might be organ harvesting. Like the eye was good, so they took out the eye. They need a doctor because the, the pink suits can't just do it themselves. Uh, you'd think they'd be able to root around inside of a body and be able to find whatever the fuck they're trying to find if it's something that they didn't need a doctor for. But organ harvesting, they would definitely need a doctor for. So... That's my guess as of right now. I worked myself into an answer, actually. It's, it's organ harvesting. They're just harvesting organs. Are, are they, and, and, like, they that guy was still alive when they put him in the box. Was that the case for the other guy that they were organ harvesting? Like, are they doing this for the ones that uh, don't die right away? And so they, they assumingly aren't hurt the most. That way more of their organs are okay afterwards. Could be. Again, a way to make a little bit of money on the side, on top of the money they're already making. And that's going to get uh, blown wide open. Probably by policeman. Like, policeman's probably going to try and figure out some shit here. And he's going to get them caught. And that whole thing is going to go up in flames. But I'm not sure how that's going. Like, it's, an, it's, it's very interesting. I'm not sure how tied into the overarching plot it is. Like, what relevancy is that going to have towards this whole thing getting broke like are we gonna do a thing where the whole squid game if that's what the organization is called i don't know uh what well, are we gonna do this if it gets broken up at the end like is that where we're going with the policeman stuff so it seems like it but we could also go on the tragic way if he just dies in the end and then maybe you know ji Hyun has to piece it all together or like his notes get out there somehow and then more people find out but i don't think they're gonna do a like we're gonna break up the organization at the end of this episode. I don't think it's going to happen. I've also never seen a death game in which that's ever happened. Which is surprising. But yeah, I mean, I've never, ever seen a death game in which the organization is stopped. Because that's also like, how do you stop capitalism just with like a handful of people? You, you just can't do it. It's a much larger scale sort of thing. You would need it to be a, a like, Zero, I, I think the, the Fukumoto manga Zero is not quite a death game sort of thing at all. I mean, I, I guess it is the first part, but it, it, that's very interesting to me in terms of this, like, someone who's doing a shitload of death games over and over and over again to try and get, and other games as well, to try and get enough money to be able to go up against the, essentially, leaders of the world, but a lot of leaders of the world doing death games because, of course, it's that kind of series, but still going up against these powerhouses who have trillions of money and you need trillions of money to be able to go up against them and uh that's like the only thing that i can think would work at taking out a thing like this just having a police fan come in here who's like taking notes like shapes masks 
killings. That's going to do nothing. That's that's not helping anybody. So I can't imagine that's how we're going to end this. It's got to end in a tragic way. But then what's going on with the whole organ harvesting scenario and the doctor? Is that, again, just a whole plot line that we're just unraveling and unraveling and unraveling until we just cut it out? Just cut in terms of, like, killing them, you know? Like, is this going to be another, like, tragic ending sort of thing where, I mean, I don't know how tragic it can be, but still, you get my point. Is this just leading to a bait and switch of kill them and then you feel a fuckload of, like, damn, they did all this shit and they went nowhere, whether they were a good person or not? Uh... Or is it actually leading towards a meaningful uh, thing that's going to affect the outcome of the game? I mean, like, it already is affecting the outcome of the game in terms of the Doctor character, but is it going to be more? I don't know what I'm saying here. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope you guys know what I'm saying, because I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Also, the fact that, like, they don't get washed uniforms or anything like that. Like, their uniforms are just, you got to wear them the whole last time, so they're just covered in dry blood and shit like that. Honestly, also, I didn't even think about it, but the fact that Deoxu was able to be able to, uh, like, do the tug-of-war thing and win, even when his leg was just stabbed and stitched back up that day... This guy has got some incredible strength. I will give him that. I can see where people go with him on that alone. He's got some insane strength. The, the lights out sequence was terrifying, albeit hard to follow at times. Like, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, I think it would have been better without the flashing light, but at the same time, I understand how the flashing light causes far more chaos and everything. But... I mean, yeah, I'm not sure how entertaining it was to watch. It was very like, well, I'm just going to wait for the outcome of this because I don't know what happened. It also seemed like in the Lights Out thing that about half the people in there were just straight up killing people. Like, were just taking metal bars and killing everybody. Like, his group didn't even have ten people at that point. They had like six people. And we saw like half of the place was murdering each other. But then we also have them saying, we took out 27 people. Which... I don't know if that's just them, bra like, that could just be them, like, you know, hyping themselves up and bragging and sort of thing, like, even though they're just saying it to themselves, it's still, like, you know, bragging amongst themselves. That's the only thing I can think of, because, yeah, like, it, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, there's no way that six people killed 27 people, like, maybe, but that's also not what we were shown. Like, so, I, yeah, that, that's my only, I have a little bit of complaints with that, but that's about it. Also, I didn't even think about it, but, like, the whole, like, uh, Sung Woo saying, like, you know, oh, we can't have these women on our team, we need a bunch of men, maybe we already kind of did get the, like, throwing them back in his face sort of thing, with the fact that, to be fair, it took no convince, like, the women were just like, sure, let's go along with this plan, it's our best option, and all the men were, fuck you, old man, shut up and just let us die, like, if we had a whole group of just random men that we brought on here, it would be the worst, they're all just gonna sit here and go, no, I'm not gonna do this strategy, I'd rather just die. I'd rather die than do strategy. <laughs> Again, also with the statement of, we gave them less food to incite, like, the violence and the killings and all that. But did they give them less food? Because they gave them the exact amount of food, and then somebody else just stole it. And again, I know that's what the point is. Like, I mean, the, the whole, like, you know, we don't have enough food to go around for, you know, the homeless people or people who just can't eat or whatever. Like, saying we don't have enough food to go around when it's a very arbitrary, like, well, you could have just made more food. Like, especially when it comes to, like, America and stuff. And it's like, well, you could have just, you have so, like, you throw away... Uh, endless 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 amounts of food every day that are perfectly fine um and, and like yeah you, you say you don't have enough food but you clearly do but then on top of that to the like oh well we don't have any food left because this person stole your food again when you are arbitrarily making a amount of food that you have because you're just throwing away all the food that you deem bad because it's not a perfect condition anymore meaning like produce for example like if produce is not you know done that day then it gets thrown out even though it lasts many many days and everything but you know it, it, it's it's that sort of shit it's the the falsified like uh i can't remember what the word is but the, the falsified saying how much food that you have left and everything uh and like the we could solve world hunger anytime we want it there there's 
There's no reason why the world can't solve world hunger. They, I mean, the only reason why is just money. Like, that. that's it. We have enough food. We just throw it all away. We could do it all and, and just, you know, do it non-profit. But, no, of course not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Why would they? <laughs> but, yeah. So, we, I, I understand it in that sense. I understand the metaphor they're going for. I just don't understand why they themselves think, oh, we gave them less food. Like, that's being very honest with themselves because it's like, well, yeah, that you gave them not enough mood, food because you uh, suspected somebody was going to steal it. Like, it all does make sense. I'm surprised they're that honest with themselves. <laughs> Hope to get some more on Ollie. I feel like we're sleeping on Ollie. Like, I feel like we're really sleeping on him. There's there's some interesting shit going on there that I'm curious about. Again, as well as Sangwoo, I feel like still has more secrets that I'm curious about, but we'll get those at the end game. We're still setting up a lot of stuff right now, even though we are four episodes in. We're still setting up quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, this episode, a lot, a lot of character stuff. Not a lot of else to talk about. We have the Morse code thing going on. Um, something going on there. Again, a lot of setup right now, but I'm not sure where some of it's going or versus like we just have to wait for it to play out and get a little bit more information. But yeah, I think that's it for this episode. I will see you guys for the next episode. A bit of a small discussion on this one, but again, a lot of, a lot of character intrigue, but not a lot of stuff to concretely talk about. Um, I will see you guys for the next one. Until then, get the fuck out of here.